Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Juana Words Podcast. I'm Juan Alanis. My name is Angelica Casares. And, uh, oh my God, I was trying to be silly, but go ahead, keep going with it. And you're over it, right? You were just saying that you're over it? You're over it. I'm over it. You're over it. I'm over it. <laughs> you're just ready for January 20th. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know what else to do. I feel so uncomfortable every time like I hear it or I see somebody bring it up and I'm like, uh yeah, I'm just hoping that we can get to January 20th and beyond. And no, we're going to get to January 20th. The days are going to come and they're going to go peacefully. and it's going to... I want to get to it peacefully. I don't know if that's going to happen, but yeah. January 20th is going to come and it's going to go and things are going to happen the way they're going to happen. Yeah. Okay. That's a good way of looking at it, I guess. A good way of like looking at life in general. It's going to happen. It's going to... If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. going to get here and it's going to be here and we're, and we're going to move on or whatever happens and... <laughs> i don't know what else no, can you possibly say true. about it that's true no it is true but you know it's crazy times definitely for sure this period definitely for sure definitely for sure i don't know what else to say i'm like oh, there's like kind of crazy times yeah but um this is actually our second episode of season three three so that's exciting that's exciting and uh um what was i gonna say about that after that <laughs> Are you just yeah? I just out of it today. so here's the thing: it's that this week has been a whole a whole. Well, here's what I can talk about in 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 terms of like what happened January sixth. Here's what I can say. Here's what I can talk about seventh or sixth. June sixth. Here's no, what I June sixth January sixth January sixth. Um, here's what I here's what I can talk about my feelings and how I felt thus far. Mm. I have been just. I feel like I'm on edge. Mm. constantly i feel like i don't know who to trust mm. i don't know who to look for or look to and i was thinking to myself like uh not to put our political agenda out there but um we tend even though the most for the most part uh hispanics some hispanics and those who live in our cities tend to be democratic mm. who tend to be democrats um they still have conservative views mm. they still sometimes when it comes to certain agendas and certain policies they tend to vote very conservatively yeah and it's because most of us are christian and then we do follow a faith of like being catholics and Thus and so far. And so the problem is that I cannot in good faith feel like I can rejoin the conservative views and values at the moment because I don't know who to trust. Mm. I feel so, and it it's, I don't know, when I think about it, like it makes me so uncomfortable and I just, I... I don't, I'm just, I'm so over it. I'm ready. I, I, at some point, maybe in a few years, I'm ready to rejoin that conservative, the conservativeness that is, that we, we do sometimes hold. Mm. Um, I do believe in, in, in a, you know, growing up when I became interested in, in government, mm -hmm. uh, I do believe in, in the separation of church and state. Mm. I do. But I understand that policies that I that tend to be conservative of mine that I do, you know, navigate towards. I, I don't know when to rejoin that conservative force mm. that I that I know myself to be and that my mom knows to be. And I just we who do you trust? Yeah, well, I think it's definitely it's definitely a defining moment. I think for for <laughs> the for the Republican Party and and for the Democratic Party too. I think I, it's a I don't know moment. I think for both parties and like I don't. I mean, I, I growing up, I consider myself Democrat, and uh, I just that my that was just what I grew up in acknowledging. Not even I don't even think it wasn't even in my household. It was just like that's what I was familiar with, what I was most. Um, but honestly, like I all of this craziness, like I has give made me soured me a lot to either party, because I think it's like there's a lot of like um, back and forth. That's not. I feel like it's not productive, but. I'm more than anything about January 6th. I'm just, I'm just mad. Like, I'm just mad that, like, it happened. I, at some point, did somebody, like, this isn't, um, somebody took this real life somebody thought this was like fantasy football and then they thought, like, oh, okay, no, yeah, for sure. Now, like, this is a real game. Like, the fuck like what the hell's going on like who where why and what like how yeah no I'm, i mean I, I mean i'm just mad that like i'm trying to make light of it because that's the only way i know how to handle things is to yeah. make is to see like the end of it but like how did 
how do we get here? How did we get here? Like, I, we all know how we got here, but how do we allow it to get here? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the thing, well, I, I don't want to spend so much time on it, but I think that... You're you right. Know, it doesn't were, deserve the time. There were a lot of signs, I think, and there were a lot of, like... Like I don't know, I don't know if it was people weren't paying attention or people didn't want to pay attention or I don't know what it was, but I think what makes what makes me mad made made me mad and what makes me mad is just to see I don't know like Do I think you I think the, I think just the difference like the difference in like yeah. in the way things were handled. Do um, you remember? Do you re- I so f- fucking recall this and excuse my language. I'm so sorry. I so recall this moment. Do you remember how you felt the day? After election day four years ago. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I felt like I was pretty upset about I it. I feel like that again. T- I, I felt like that again that day, January 6th. I felt like that again. I was like, how, what a, what another blow. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. Like, I guess I feel like in, after the election in 2016, I felt bad. I didn't, I felt like upset. I didn't, I wasn't happy with the results, but I didn't feel, there wasn't a, a feeling of like, almost hopelessness i felt and hopelessness I feel, then I did, I, I did feel it a little bit but i feel like now like it's escalated so much more because it's been four years and you know it can, you, at a certain point you're like okay th- th- whatever's happening is happening but eventually there's going to be a change hmm. but i think what what to me january 6th was was a, like a realization like well no this is not the this is not the culmination of something i feel like it's like it's the beginning of something and that to me is what makes scary me, yeah that's that to me is like that's what, scary like, like why I, like it makes me uncomfortable to like even think like that uh january 20th could not even happen or that there could be like a big insurrection on january 20th and i'm like before like you would you might have thought like an insurrection possible but you would have never thought until it actually happened now i understand that people don't believe that that was an insurrection and they don't believe that there was but a type of was. that there was a type of of uh coup happening but it was um but i i don't know i don't know what to say about it i don't know how to think about it to be honest even talking about it here now with you Han, my my heart is just like racing because no matter what we say or no matter how we tell people how we feel and we were four years ago i remember feeling like days after that i was so um like my i was so clenched because everybody was taking the words you were saying and totally if they they didn't like if you didn't see their view the way you saw it and i kept trying to explain to people four years ago that are you not watching this are you are you not listening to the words this man is saying and he's telling you that he does not like in my honest opinion in my humble opinion and i'm telling i'm saying this i feel like he just he doesn't like anybody from south of the border anybody Anybody with melatonin. <laughs> yeah, anybody with anybody with, with melatonin, melatonin in their, their skin. skin. Yeah. I, I, I honestly don't, I honestly believe that. And how, why would you allow a person like that to st- sit in office? Why would you allow that? Like, he told you then who he was. He mm. told you then. Um, th- and, and the thing is that not everybody, and the thing is that they thought that you attacking the th- that person the president you attacking him was attack on them and i was like are you not understanding you have please separate yourself from that please understand put any is somebody put somebody else in office select somebody else this is not the way to go for your party to win this is not it i get it i get it you know um when i when when and i've said this publicly when president obama was it was um was up for election and i didn't want him to be the representation of the democratic party mm-hmm. right but um i was like for the for the and i was i was between like votes you know i was like well i don't really like the the republican party nominate who the person who they nominated so i was like and i i was very like i was so confused by like what my thoughts were and the more I would talk to my family, the more I understood that my vote mattered and that I had a, and that I, my vote actually went um, to Barack Obama because I knew it was my family who needed that vote. Those who couldn't vote needed that vote mm-hmm. for him mm-hmm. um, to help them. 
And I, I knew that that's what uh, like I had to do. Like I wasn't going to vote, and I was like, no, I have to vote. And by conversations with my family, I figured, you know what, this vote is for them, those who can't vote. I, w- I will vote in this direction. And that's what I did. And so, no, that, that wasn't my pick. It wasn't my pick, but I did it. And I, I couldn't understand why people... I didn't understand why people four years ago couldn't separate themselves from this nomination, from this person. I was like, look, just why do you insist on sinking with the ship? Well, I think that it's uh, I think the saddest part to me is that I feel like it's preying on people that were um, felt desperate or felt unhappy. And it's it's a lot of it is preying on those people. And so I want to empathize with the why they're angry at the government, why they feel disenfranchised. I want to empathize. But then when you this do is not stuff, the way, though, that was not the way. Do, but when you do stuff like with January 6th, like it's hard to empathize with people at that point because uh, people of color have protested and they didn't receive the same treatment. They would have never like been allowed to walk out. They would have never been allowed to do that. There's a reason. So there's that, a reason that, sometimes. Like, there's such a difference, and that that's enraging. That 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 that, that it's so bluntly, blatantly obvious, and it's just like oh, and like people can excuse it away and make up re- make up reasons for that difference. But the reality is that the it's a, it's right there. You can see the difference. There is a reason. Do you remember that that walk that we did that one time out years ago? Well, yeah. Like, Do you remember well, that walk uh, we did for the the Latino march? Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember it happened here and how many of us got together? There's a reason I think a lot of Hispanics and, even and then, mainly we, were, we weren't allowed to go certain places, <laughs> even here in Houston. Like we were control contained to an er- one area. Correct. Now, what I was saying, Juan, was that um, I'm sorry. I know you're getting upset and you're trying to say everything. No, I'm I remembering want. and I'm getting mad. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. There's a reason sometimes um, the Mexican community doesn't go out there in March. I feel like we're constantly being told, be lucky you're here. Be lucky this is enough for you. Be lucky. And sometimes you're right. The situation in Mexico isn't all that grand for a lot of the people that migrated here. And they do feel lucky, but they do understand that there are so many disparities even within that luck that people call. You know what I mean? And so the the problem, the thing is that we don't want to, like there's causing commotion is not a thing that we want to do. We want we like it it so it's a difficult it's it's we're meeting at both ends you know you got the young ones telling the older ones like hey this is not okay and the older ones being like hey like uh, that's not a hill i want to die on like i just i want to live peacefully like i just you know what i mean and but we see the injustice and we understand that that would have never like been allowed even i mean even here when we did the when the black lives matters movement like where there was marches here protests here do you remember the cops like and, chasing uh, down the black lives yeah, matter and then they were surrounding well, even the courthouse like, we were in downtown and we saw like that they the police they, it wasn't even a large crowd in houston i think there were a handful a co- of people there were a few hundreds and, but uh, it wasn't thousands the were, way they did on the capitol even at that they were dispersed so they, the groups were like factions of like 20s that were like 20 people that were walking around together in different areas mm-hmm. And they were being chased around by police, like all the police from making around, sure from they the, were like corralling them and went in direction. All the, all the police from the surrounding cities, like came yeah. to Houston to you downtown had Lake Houston, C- Lake City. You had to, Pasadena. You had to yeah. like to help the HPD patrol. And obviously, H- Houston. It's, you're talking about Houston versus the capital, but you would. You but would even expect, HPD has a huge number of cops. But you would expect that the capital, being the, the the capital of the United States, would have more more security than than even Houston. So like that to me is just crazy. But you know, I didn't. I. Uh, I didn't, I didn't, I was almost kind of numb to the whole thing when it was happening because it was like, it was, even though it was surprising, it wasn't unexpected. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of numb to it. And I didn't, I like, I didn't really get emotional at any point. I think I was more emotional in 2016 than I was th- when this happened. But the only time that I kind of got emotional was last night when we were watching a, um, a, like, a, a, like ABC did a special and they were recapping what happened. Mm-hmm. And when they, at the end, they talked about how the people of color are, are were the ones that after everything was done, they started cleaning mm-hmm. and they were picking up the mess and i was like i was like yeah like that's that's true like they do end up cleaning the mess and i was like that that was the part that got me that like the love of country that people like us and our parents feel mm-hmm. and we're not even like treated like we like people want to believe that we don't belong here mm-hmm. so to me that was like the emotional part that I, I i when i started feeling like i was like oh that that did hit me here and it's not that i don't care about this country but 
I do care, but it's just gotten to a point where everything is just so like tense all the time that it wasn't a surprise that that it, that that even happened. Everybody's disenfranchised. Yeah. There's 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 I live we live in a we live in a state where uh we're a senator. Like, you know, and and you feel like it feels so uncomfortable. You think to yourself, I don't feel safe leaving my county. I don't feel safe leaving my city. Like, what's going to happen if we, like, go somewhere just to, like, you know, because we like to do things like small road trips and go to little towns. And and what's going to happen as soon as we're like, oh, yeah, we're from Houston. They're like, ah, really? Like, you already get that <laughs> sense of, like, oh, really? Yeah. You're like, yeah. And I now I see, I understand. I understand why sometimes some Hispanics who live in smaller uh, counties or smaller um, sparsely like populated counties and small towns, they just, they, they, you know, what can they do if they go against the, the, the norm, if they go against the bigger population of like, and so they do, they, they end up seeing and viewing things the same way that, that people from other ethnicities see things. And I, I don't know, we can go on and on with this topic, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, but let's. Ooh, let's that leave was it heavy, real now. fast. That was. So, <laughs> how, how long did we talk about that? Because I even said, I was like, well, I don't know if we should touch that." <laughs> well, let's take a little break. Jesus, yeah. We'll come back. You back up on your bullshit. Don't belong to me. You acting all sleazy. I don't like what I see. I got all the game. Don't get fucked in your brain. I can do you worse than you ever did me for. Hey, this is Angelica Casares. And this is Juan Alanis. Thank you so much for joining us on season two of Juan Words podcast. You can find us on. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, on uh, Stitcher, Spotify, and other platforms. Uh, also on our website at wannawords.com. And we hope you enjoyed the episode that you're listening to right now. And if you enjoyed it, you can leave us a review and a thumbs up. If especially on the Apple like platform, the higher we ratings and the reviews we get, the more listeners we actually can be found by. Yeah. So. It really does. It really does help us. So uh, we really yeah. would appreciate it. A rating or a review on Apple Podcast. And uh, until next time, thank we'll see you. See you then. Bye. Bye bye. Back up on my P shit. I don't care if you don't like it. I'm really different. Don't gotta show you I'm like that. Like the baby. All right. Well, if you're still with us, thank you for coming back. We just wanted. We just wanted to uh, just get our. I guess. <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> No, if you're still with us, thank you for coming back. Uh, we just wanted to, like, I guess, uh, desahogarnos un poco. Like, take, take, just express, just say a few things about how we were feeling about that. Um, you know, but before we go much further, let's talk about our sponsor for this episode, yeah. uh, which is Comcast. Our friends at Comcast um, here in Houston, who we've been working with for the last couple of weeks. And, um, you know, they, uh, you know, as we've said before, we've, we've been friends with them for a while. Um, friends, like, you know, we <laughs> say that in quotes because, no, we, they we, are we, friends. We, Why would you say that in quotes? I, know, I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just being silly at this point. But no, I mean, we have been working with them for quite some time and we know how active they are in the community mm-hmm. um, and supporting different things, different initiatives. Right now, they're doing a program to support entrepreneurs here in Houston. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've done programs before where they annually they, they recognize Latino leaders in the community during Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, and we also happen to be using their wi-fi service to Mm -hmm. produce this show and to um, edit and upload our content so um, definitely check out comcast houston and xfinity and all the services that they have to offer Um, with that i want to talk a little bit about um you haven't been on it you've kind of dabbled on it but i want to talk about the new social app that everybody's which one the hot one that everybody's talking about right now hot clubhouse hot hot clubhouse i was gonna say hot house (laughs) <laughs> what, 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 what kind of app is that? I was like, the bathhouse? Is that, is, should I be worried? Or should I get on it? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hot house? <laughs> then I said bathhouse. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. No, but Clubhouse, if you haven't, if you're not familiar, is a new um, social media app that I think just hit 1 million users this week. And it's only on Apple right now. It's only on the Apple. So a lot iOS of people, and iOS devices. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people that have Androids are like... Missing um, out. They're like, we have a FOMO right now because we don't, we're not sure what this is. But if you've never heard of this, if this is brand new to you, if you've never heard of Clubhouse, uh, it's basically an audio like app where you connect... And people are having like live conversations from all over the world. Like wherever you are, you can you can mm-hmm. tap into this app, and people are having like conversations. I have the slightest clue what the hell is going on on Clubhouse, or yeah. as Juan would say, Hot House. I don't know what's happening over there. I I signed up, I signed on, and I was on the app for all of 
three minutes yeah i haven't done anything nothing nothing no no i mean there's a little I'm bit of so, a learning curve tengo tanta hueva. i have <laughs> such a like a blah, to learn a whole new app and i'm excited about it but i just oh it frustrates me when i don't get it right the first time when i don't understand how to use something and i was on it for three minutes and i was like what button do i push there's there's houses Mm-hmm. There's clubs. What are, where are they called? Houses clubs. or clubs? There's clubs. There's clubs, and then you do what? And they're like, like they're like uh, live chats. So and then you do what? You you just chat with other people. So at any given moment, there are like chats happening. So um, at any given moment, there are chats happening. There's a learning. There's a little bit of a learning curve because the first time I signed up to the app, the app, I was like you. I signed up for it and I was like mm, I don't get it, and I logged out. And, I, and then there was several days before I got back in. And I got back in because I think somebody invited me. I was like to a, to a group, and mm-hmm. I was like, okay, let me go see what this is about. Mm-hmm. And I logged in, and then I I, I um, came into a group, and it was all Latinos. It's mm-hmm. called Amigos, and they meet daily at 9 a.m. Central Time, and they were like just talking. And it was some people that I knew, some people that I hadn't met, but it was just people from everywhere, uh-huh. and it was pretty cool uh-huh. at that point. And then uh, and then I was like, okay, like I kind of get the gist of this. Like people are just kind of networking on here, and then uh, and then they were going in order. Order. and i was like how do they know who how do they know what order we're in <laughs> so when uh, people were people just seemed to know what, that they were next oh. so they were just talking and i was confused i was like how do i know like what and every time i w- had to speak they called my name so you have to be invited like you can go into a room and you can just listen <laughs> or you can go into a room and then they invite you to come on the stage or you can raise your hand and say that you want to go on the stage on the virtual stage and then you when you go on the virtual stage then you're part of the conversation and you can talk back and forth with the people that are on there <laughs> You know, I don't even explain it to me because I don't even care right now, Juan, because I, look, I, I have it down on my to do list where I'm going to go watch YouTube videos on how to use Clubhouse oh, that's before a good I log idea back in for a YouTube video. Huh? That's a good idea for a YouTube video. Well, I hope somebody made one because I don't know how to use it. And you I just make one. I don't know how to use it. How would why would I make it? I'm going to be like, join Clubhouse. Don't log back on for another two weeks. You log back on and get frustrated and you log off and you log on a couple of hours later. Look, I have no idea. <laughs> No, so I, I'm hoping somebody has a YouTube or you made a YouTube video about Clubhouse, not how great it is, but how to use it. Well, I think that that's I was actually suggesting that to somebody the other day, like just the other day. I was saying that there should like somebody should do because I think there there is a, a little bit of a learning curve, like I said at the beginning. But the only reason I wanted to mention it is because yesterday, like there was a group that was doing a 24 hour like live stream audio mm-hmm. live stream mm-hmm. and it started in like spain or whatever it was like the european um spanish speakers started this 24 hour thing that they were going to do just to and the pro purpose that they wanted to do this 24 hour live stream was to um get the clubhouse's app um developers attention mm-hmm. that there were all these spanish speakers on there as well that wanted to be you know wanted to, to be acknowledged mm-hmm. And so it was pretty cool just the way it was organically happening because then when the year, when it became nighttime for the Europeans, then the um, state side took over, the Americas oh, took cool. over. Oh, how cool, how cool. And then, and it was all in Spanish. So it was like, everybody was just like, and then they were doing, they were like, when they got tired, they were like, okay, guys, like I have to go. Is anybody volunteering to come to take over for as MC for a little while? Mm-hmm. And people would volunteer like, yes, I can take over. I'll, I'll take over for the next hour, for the next two hours. Mm-hmm. Did you yeah. volunteer? No, I didn't volunteer because I was working, so I was just kind of listening. What to the hell, Juan? No, I couldn't. What kind of leadership is that? How are you going to be like? <laughs> so what happened? I didn't join. No, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm dabbling in it because I just I'm just like taking it in right now to see how people are using it, see what's happening on there. Because I'm not sure what I want to do with it yet. I just think it's fun. It's like interesting to listen to people talk on there. But I just mm. wanted to share that because if you guys, I don't know if you guys have, are interested or even care about that. But if, if you're you, on Clubhouse, come look for us. My name is I N J E L I C A underscore C A Z A. Yeah, and I'm uh, the same one. One of words you can find from the podcast page there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure what to do with that, with the, with it yet. I'm not, I may just end up listening the, the whole time that I'm in there. But it's a cool new app. If you're into digital stuff, you might find it interesting. So mm. just wanted to share um, that that's an interesting thing happening. All right. So if you're on Clubhouse, I, I believe you have to be invited still. Yeah, you do have to be invited. You do have to be invited, which is like, it's funny how they always do that with the apps because they like want to make people feel like you're exclusive. You're exclusive. Stop lying. Stop lying to people. Just open it up and let everybody join. 
if you can't if you can't get in then you're not special <laughs> i see like i but this I'm club like, i think clubhouse is is the new like next twitter but in voice version because um people are on it and they're loving it they are absolutely loving it and it's addicting yeah and so the thing with that is that people um it's 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 like the new thing and people are like eager to be on there and i i'm in other groups um i'm in other groups so, for example, um, with my podcast, because I've been flying solo, I've been joining like other groups on Facebook, on Facebook, mind you. And people are like, are you on Clubhouse? Are you on Clubhouse? And people are like, no, nobody's inviting me. Invite me, invite me, invite me, invite me. And they're like, I got two invites and I'm going to use them very carefully. Who wants to be invited? And I was like, what the hell? Wait, I have invites because I was like, do I have invites that I can give to people? What's going on? Like people are like, I, they're like, who wants in? Who's my friend? Uh, Who's my friend? And I people are just excited five, about it. Huh? I think you get four or five invites. Everybody gets four. Or five invites everybody gets four or five invites yeah holy shit so, then, so i got four and five invites. <laughs> so then you can invite whoever you want and, no uh, idea but people are like yeah and they're like oh my god people are like well you got to give me your number because it's it, it's through your number and you got to do this and i'm like the fuck is going everyone calm the fuck down <laughs> like everyone take a deep breath <gasps> all right clubhouse let's do this but i mean everybody's so excited and i feel i i can feel it i feel like it's the next next big thing and i hope it stays on instagram was like that yeah i remember instagram everybody was so excited about it and as soon as they like added the 15 second video and everyone's like oh my god so revolutionary this is awesome <laughs> <laughs> and everybody i was like it's, it's, it feels like that but you know what it's true it's true i need to not lag my ass on clubhouse and just join it already lag my ass <laughs> lag my yeah because i'm very i'm i yeah i do i lag a lot um I, I'm excited for it also, but I get very frustrated at, at, at an app that its functionalities aren't something I'm used to. Mm. So I'll watch the video and I'll, by the time you put this up, I'll, I'll probably, I'll be on there. You'll be on there. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, yeah. It'll be cool. Like you'll, you'll it'll like cool. it. I think it'll, I, I'm waiting to, I'm waiting to see how people use it when it's like, when like things are happening live and, and like, I wonder if people are going to be reporting with it at some point or like mm -hmm. broadcasting from live things. Mm -hmm. I think that might be interesting. So yeah. we'll see what happens. But, um, having said that, like I want, I told you that I wanted to like kind of uh, talk a little bit about dreams. Okay. So we're moving on to the next topic. Yeah. All right. <laughs> transition <laughs> so i wanted to talk to you a little bit about dreams um and just and, and i the reason i like the reason i thought about this like this is kind of a weird transition from from the from the what we were just talking about to this but, <laughs> <laughs> but i just like i wrote it down on my on my notes um on my on my the notes app on my phone because i i had a weird dream the other day I and uh, and after i had the dream i was like wait like what what like why um why did I have that dream? Mm. And, you know, like, you, you you know how some, sometimes people say that you can interpret your dreams? That, you know, you, your, your dreams yeah. could mean something. Yeah. Not that they do, but some people believe that you can interpret your dreams. I, I have, uh, I suffer from <laughs> a syndrome called vivid dreams. Mm. What is that? It's not an actual syndrome, I'm making that up. <laughs> no, I know, but I'm, no, I know, but um, I'm asking yeah, what I know. you mean by that. Um, I have very vivid dreams. Like, I just... I feel like dreams are just part of my life now. Like I can't, it's so difficult for me to disassociate what I dreamt because mm. they feel so real lately. So as of lately, I just, I've been having a really hard time going to sleep and staying asleep. And I feel like that's been ongoing. Um, I think that it happened right after my sister's diagnosis. Mm. And sometimes I have, I have, sometimes I, I have a very good, uh, do, do you dream, hold do you, of, do you dream often? Sorry. I mean, uh, you. yes. Yeah. Sometimes I'm even afraid to go to sleep because I'm like, fuck, man, what do you remember am I going to have? And it's going to be too intense for me to like wake up tomorrow and be like, oh, no, it was just a dream. I'm like, no, you know what I mean? And so I I do. I have very vivid dreams. And I, I, I sometimes I fear my own dreams. And sometimes um, when you're sick uh, and I get not sick often, but sometimes I get sick uh, to a, a, to a length of of like I um like I get like my sinuses, mm -hmm. and so when you're sick or when you eat when you eat like not that well, uh, like late at night, mm -hmm. and I I consume food when I feel stressed, and so I'm stressed because I'm not sleeping that well, and I I don't sleep well because I eat because of my stress. So anyway, um, I do I have vivid dreams, and I am very sometimes sometimes I'm even afraid to go to sleep because of those dreams, mm -hmm. and I get like, frustrated. Would you say you have dreams or nightmares? 
I have very vivid dreams, and some of them are nightmares. And that's when I get scared to go to sleep. So, because I feel like I don't really have dreams all that often. Like, uh, like at least I don't have dreams that I can remember. Oh, shut up! I I told you yesterday. I hate you. I hate you. This person right here <laughs> can lay his his bed. He can lay on his like on his pillow on his head and be asleep within like three minutes of like closing his eyes. I hate him. I hate him for that. Like I hear him snore. I'm like, oh, okay. I see. I see. You're like you're just you're just boasting now that you can just. <laughs> Go to sleep immediately. I, I, I mentally exhaust myself to the point where when I go to bed, I'm like ready to go to sleep. And sometimes, like I, sometimes I do stay up late. Like I can't. Sometimes I have tri- trouble going to sleep. Well, staying up late for you is like eleven thirty. No, <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> I, no, like I can stay up to like I usually can stay up till midnight because I do like to wake up early sometimes, um, or most times during the week. So I like to wake up early. But so like if I stay up to twelve, that's already kind of late. And if I stay past twelve, like one. Two o'clock, then I'm like, okay, if I stay up to two o'clock, I know I'm not going to get up at five. So I'm like, okay, then I, I, get, I have to give myself a little leniency and, and get up at six, 6.30 instead of five. Um, but I, You know what, Juan? There's, I remember there was a time, there's, and this happens to me not so often because you'll come to me and be like, I, I couldn't go to sleep last night. It was just, it was horrible and terrible. Like I ended up not going to sleep till like three o'clock. And that you'll come and tell me that, and that's like maybe once every three months, once mm-hmm. every you know whatever. And it I'm like, that that's the story me. of my life. That's like a fucking Tuesday for me, Juan. Like, mm-hmm. what are you talking about? He's like, it was horrible. I didn't get enough sleep. And then you'll even like, you'll even give yourself leniency and grace. Well, you 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 have this sofa in your office, right? And I'll come in here like midday, like maybe one o'clock, mm-hmm. and he's like laid out snoring. And I'm like, mira no mas. Like he gave himself time to take a nap. Like it's all cool and legit but me like i said i have a very hard time going to sleep so when i go to sleep like when i have a hard time and sometimes i can stay up and not wanting to sometimes i can be up at like five o'clock in the morning 5 30 and now you you you'll feel me and the good thing is that you're a heavy sleeper but you'll feel me and hear me like moving around and moving around and moving around and there's even been times where you have woken up and i'm still awake and i'm like Juan, i haven't been able to go to sleep mm-hmm. and you're like oh shit you're okay and i'm like no i'm fine it's just it's just don't wake me up don't bother me you know I'll, I'll get i'll catch at least like five hours of sleep and i'll, I'll wake up you know before 12 o'clock i'll be awake mm-hmm. um but but things like that moments like that would happen in 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 us but then for me i feel like I don't give myself grace and you see me push me myself and then you'll push me too and you'll be like you'll be in the room you're like you're still asleep and i'm like can i fucking help you like yes i'm still asleep this is my nap because guess what i got three hours of sleep last night and but i do like I, I do see yeah so i can i can see how you right now see your dreams as like a a, a sense of calling to something else an no, interpretation of things no um maybe like i don't know like i don't i don't know if i really believe that they're an interpretation but i just no but okay so i want to hear your dream but wait no i don't feel like they're necessarily interpretations like i feel like some like because i can have dreams sometimes and i'm like oh okay like oh, okay that was weird and I, and I don't give it a second thought but sometimes when your dream like stays with you then you're like so your dream about something that like i guess more like more um significant to you mm-hmm. then you know you you do think about it like oh what is that i wonder what that meant or i wonder why i dreamed that but i generally don't feel like i dream a lot like i feel like i normally don't like when i go to sleep i don't really or, and or i should let me correct it because i think that uh, supposedly everybody has dreams every night every night you dream every night you do in your room you just you just don't remember them no not sorry not in rem you have dreams right before rem yeah, mm-hmm. that you normally everybody's supposed to have dreams, but you don't always remember the, what you dream. Correct. What you dreamt. Yeah. And so, I, um, I for the most part don't ever really remember what I dream. Like it's not like, and if I do, it's been like like things like where like i was falling i felt like i was falling or mm-hmm. i was being squished somewhere <laughs> or like like i was in a room and i was being squished or like so it's always the bad things that i remember mm-hmm. uh, and ever so often i will remember something that's not not so bad it's more like um in between or it's like more r- related to real life and yeah I, I do those are the those are the ones that are like they're so vivid where like they're related to like real life yeah and the, those are the ones that to me i'm like oh okay like what is that well what does that mean mm-hmm. like, yeah <laughs> like why did i have that dream yeah so like my dream like this time that and like i i it was i don't even remember exactly how the w- dream went but it felt real real to the point that i like woke up and i was like wait did that just happen or did i just imagine that uh or, or, did, that. or did i just dream that mm-hmm. And my dream was basically like I was I was dreaming 
like that i was having like some kind of tension with my dad and that like mm-hmm. there was some tension that we were having mm-hmm. and that i was like like i don't know if we were arguing or like what we were doing but then um at the end of the dream and this is when i woke up mm-hmm. like i was like you're arguing about something that doesn't matter like because my dad passed away and i was like you know you're arguing with him about something that doesn't matter and then like he's already gone and you're still mad about something that you that already happened that or is it does it really matter mm-hmm. and then i was like oh wow and i was like okay so so some like, so some quedo. like when i mm-hmm. woke up i was like you're mad about something that already happened you're mad about you're mad about something and he's not even here anymore mm. and i was like whoa i was like that that like made me like take a step back and i was like not that i was like oh let me go find out what it means Mm -hmm. but it just made me like the that like last like little thought like stayed with me Mm -hmm. and i was like is that a message to me Mm -hmm. (laughs) like that you like am i holding grudges (laughs) Mm -hmm. am i holding on to something that i shouldn't be holding on to like what what, how what am i supposed to make of that like what what, why did i dream that Mm -hmm. you know but i think it just made me like get like ooh, like that was kind of like kind of weird and so it did make me think about like well curious then like well i wonder what like other dreams that people have and how people interpret them mm-hmm. so i was like reading up on like what are the most common dreams and what do they mean mm-hmm. and it says that a lot of times the dreams the things that you might dream you might think that they mean one thing but they actually mean the opposite you okay me yeah yeah why hmm what? Your eyes got red. My eyes got red. Yeah. Well, I think it was just like talking about my dad, but oh, like I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Why my eyes look too red or what? They just got red all of a sudden. I'm wearing contacts too, so that might be it. <laughs> no, I'm, you've had contacts all day, and all of a sudden they got red. Well, no, it's don't rub your like, eye. You got contacts in. No, it's fine. These are modern contacts. They're like, <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> the gab glue. Like the, <laughs> No, but I mean, like it, you know, it, it, it's it. I think that I it got me like uh, I didn't get emotion in the moment, but it did get it did hit me because I was like, oh wow, like that was like a, sentimental. Yeah, like it made me be like, oh wow, like I wonder why, like why I dreamt that, like mm-hmm. why that, like why why about my dad and why about something that was that was so like, you know, um, frivolous, yeah, non important. Uh, yeah, yeah, you could say that, but something that was so like um, close to real life mm-hmm. that I was like, wait, what? <laughs> mm-hmm. So it was like, you know, that was like crazy to me. Yeah. But um, so I don't know. Have you like, like have you ever dreamt anything like that? Vivid dreams like that, yeah. Um, maybe somebody out here can can interpret my dream or my dreams. A lot of the times, I have dreams that I don't remember one time. Ugh. I remember one time I um I was like not fully dressed <laughs> and naked? I, I had like a garment but that was like a shirt but it was it wouldn't go down like past to my um my bottom section mm. of of you know I didn't have any pants or underwear mm. in my dream <laughs> good god that's a great sound bite <laughs> I didn't have any pants or underwear <laughs> um and I, I. What is that line? Uh, and I was like in one this. Time at band camp. <laughs> one time at band camp. And I was in this like, um, it, it was like a small town type of vibe where it was like, you know, those houses where they house, where they house like a hay and they're like made of uh, lamina, mm. of metal. Mm-hmm. And but there was like a there was a park or some kind of like swing set or playground like off to the side and people were there and it was dark and I didn't have any pants on and I kept like hiding myself to like get away from people and I, I had I had to be somewhere important I couldn't find the things that I needed to like like uh, to clothe myself and get ready mm-hmm. and a lot of the times I I'm always I'm always in search of how to prepare myself and i'm always either waking up i'm in bed and i'm waking up and i can't seem to like orient myself mm-hmm. or i'm or I'm, I'm like in this big long house that looks like it belongs to polygamy family of like 30 of like all these rooms and i live like up in an attic and i can't seem to get down and mm-hmm. in my dreams it's always nighttime mm-hmm. um and if it's not nighttime, I'm always there's always a problem in my dream and mm-hmm. um, there's always and but i'm always lacking something 
Like I'm, and it's always closed. Why the fuck is it always closed? Well, they say that um, actually n- being naked is one of the most common dreams that people have. Uh-huh. And uh, from what I was reading, it was saying that it it means that you feel exposed, that you feel like exposed or vulnerable, like mm-hmm. in a way, like that you're like, um, I guess that you're not, I guess protected in a way, mm, not feeling protected. Yeah, you're not feeling protected, or you're mm. feeling like you're. Like part of you, like your, like your life is exposed, or part of your, um, like I said, vulnerable. You're like vulnerable in some way, mm-hmm. and it makes you uncomfortable. You're not, you're not comfortable. With I that. can see that. I think I'm still, I'm still on a journey of uh, self forgiveness. Mm. I'm in, a, I'm on a big journey of self forgiveness. Um, for, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> I think that uh, I think I'm, st- I just. Uh, there's a lot that I've spoken on here before, but there's a lot that I haven't. Mm. And I think that I'm still accepting a lot of things. Um, I can see why. Yeah. Probably like, um, and I feel like I'm not being honest with myself. Mm. Um, and I, f- I, I can, I, uh, I can see the correlation. Mm. Like you're not being honest with yourself. Yeah. not like, um, I'm I'm putting a lot of like emphasis on like why on the whys. Mm. Um and so the whys don't make sense. Like I'm still not accepting that you know I'm I'm not accepting things because I haven't forgiven myself and if I haven't forgiven myself it's because I'm not accepting things. Mm. And so I think yeah, and so I don't know. I think I I, I I struggle with like a lot of that sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I use that. And then sometimes I feel like I don't want that to be my excuse uh, Mm -hmm. for why I don't do. I feel like I'm using a lot of like my past and whether it was my fault or not as an excuse as to why I don't, I'm not where I need to be. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I need to be somewhere. And I don't know who, who gives me this, like where you need to be or where you want to be. I feel I need to be. Mm -hmm. Well, you said earlier, you said earlier the word grace, mm-hmm. like that I give myself grace, like when I don't, when I wake up, when I stay up late and then I wake up, like when I don't get enough sleep, then I give mm-hmm. myself grace. Mm-hmm. And I, I do think that's true. Like, and I think I give myself a lot more grace this, you know, mm-hmm. now than I did before, because I've like, I told you this morning, like I, I came into the room and I, <laughs> so I get up normally and like, and I like to have oatmeal in the morning for breakfast so that I can take my medicines. Mm-hmm. It's like a quick, easy breakfast that I can make that myself that, you know, that it's like, I can just heat up water, put put the oatmeal in, throw a, little, a couple of blueberries and I'm done. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's my breakfast. I make coffee and I'm good. Well, I came in here this morning and I put it on the edge of my table on my desk. And then I turned around and I don't know what I did, but I like through the all of the it like mm. came flying and it like flew on my pants flew on my shoes flew on my desk flew on my floor flew on everywhere everything mm-hmm. so i had oatmeal everywhere like that was just like still had water so it was like really like bushy mm-hmm. and then i like stepped on blueberries and i like <laughs> and so like i like before that would have pissed me off yeah. and i would have like been in a bad mood mm. like all morning if not the like not the rest of the day but all morning i would have been in a bad mood it would have thrown my day off like it would have been a bad start to my day and i would have been like ah like why did that but i was like you know what uh, and i said no i'm not gonna get mad like i don't know like it's just like I, you know i wasn't being careful i wasn't paying attention it was an accident go make yourself clean this up and make yourself another oatmeal and start again mm-hmm. oh you see <laughs> and nice. i and i did because i'm like but before like i said i would have i would have been mad and i would have put, put, altered my mood but like i feel like i've learned to give myself a lot more mm-hmm. like i guess you could say grace mm-hmm. where when stuff like that when things don't go my way or when things are like um happen where that are that are disappointing mm-hmm. or you know even when i disappoint myself i'm like okay you have to like you have to be a little bit forgiving of yourself. Mm-hmm. Because if you're not forgiving of yourself, who the hell else is going to be? Que <laughs> <laughs> perdonar. Yeah. yeah, like who's going to be, like who's going to like tell you like, and yeah, you have people that are going to tell you to, to like, you know, don't don't be so hard on yourself. Mm-hmm. But it's it's different when you can tell yourself like, you know, it's just like, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. I feel like um, I 
tend to take on a lot of outside source of like why I can't forgive myself and why I don't have grace for myself. Mm. And um, and I've exploded on you a few times because of mm. it. I, again, there's some topics that are just really sensitive to me and sometimes um, homie over here on the, my side. Um, every now and then when he gets drunk, uh, wow. these topics can't come up. Excuse there was this one time, guys, that I told him we were going, we were getting on a Zoom call with some couple of friends and there was like a drinking, like, hey, we'll do happy hour, we'll all get on. And he bought this... <laughs> Stupid drink. What was it, Juan? It was a peanut butter whiskey. Peanut butter a, whiskey. It was a peanut butter whiskey. And it uh, tastes like caramel. It tastes like caramel. It was like really yeah. sweet going down. Yeah, and it, it didn't, it, like it has a, so the sweetness takes away from the alcohol, right? So it's it, it's not complete alcohol. You taste the sweet and you taste the alcohol and you think you can t- handle it and take it. We're on the Zoom call. The Zoom call is only like an hour and a half. By the, by the time he started the Zoom call, he had already started drinking. An uh, hour and a half later, this guy was, and it was a bottle. He was already down to like more than half down the bottle. So he was already like tipsy, tipsy. And by the time we ended it, I said, Juan, you got to let you please let, let go of that bottle. Like I, you know how you get mm. when you, um, 30 minutes later. So two hours and two hours, he drank the whole bottle. And I was like, oh shit. And I knew it. I knew, mm. I knew it. I was like, oh shit, this is not going to go good. This isn't mm. going to go well because uh, you, unfortunately, and sometimes we don't have any, when you're in, inebriated, you have very little control over the things that you do sometimes. And I know that because, mm. hello, I was young at one point. I've also drank and I understand what I can do and how mean I can get also. Um, but you have very little control over like the things you um reprochas mucho so you mm. you you go back in time don't sit there and look confused you go back in time and you start confused. i'm like uh, i don't know if i want to talk about this here <laughs> no 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 it's it's just that i'm not going to talk about the sensitive things that we talk about but you go back in time and you can bring up things like in the past and i was like and i kept trying to like be like hey juan don't drink please stop please stop and so when it happened and sure enough like so the things that the things that you bring up in the in the in the past can be sensitive to me Mm-hmm. And so when you bring them up, I like, so why am I bringing this up? Well, how is this in correlation with everything else? The thing with this is that I don't give myself grace like that. Mm-hmm. I haven't found a way to give myself grace mm-hmm. for it. I, um, the only way I've known how to deal with a lot of issues is to, is for it to, like, I carry the burden always. Mm-hmm. Um, even though I'm, I'm being told sometimes like, Hey, like why, for what, 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 what is, what good is, what is good? What good are you doing by holding on to the past and taking the burden on if the past is the past? What are you like? Why? I've been told this by therapist. I've been told this by family. I've been told this by everybody else. But when you have like, sometimes like other people like bring it up and you're like, fuck, like it just, it's, it's you, it makes it like a reality for you. Mm-hmm. like oh okay <sighs> like i i do like i it's not it's not easy for me to let things like roll off my back and i think that like seeps into my dreams it seems it seeps into me at night before i go to bed i sometimes some things just i can't let it go and i think about it over and over and over and over and i do i kick myself in the ass every time and it's not like oh pobrecita me it's like why you know what i mean Mm. It's like why, 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 why? Mm. Well, I feel like I should say I'm not an abuser. <laughs> Nobody called you an abuser. <laughs> well, I feel like there is a lot of room for interpretation left there. Like you get drunk and you say mean things and you do mean things, and I'm like, well, I think. That, <laughs> let me just say that I'm not an. Is abuser. all you heard me say is just that that you're a mean person, not that I take I carry on the burden of like of the things that I can't let go. No, I hear I hear you, but I just was like, let me just say that before I say anything else because I feel like you know, like there was a lot of room left there for interpretation. Um, no, yeah, for sure, but no, it is santito tampoco. Oh, I'm not like nito ni tampoco. <laughs> yeah, and I said that. I neither am I. Yeah, but but, like, uh, but that's not the point. Like, I just wanted to say, like, okay, hold on, guys, before you start sending me hate mail and be like, uh, well, not what the if? point, but yet he makes sure he clears it up. Be like, what? Uh, before people start sending me hate mail or start sending you like all these uh, messages that like, you need to get out, you need to get out of that relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just clarify. But no, I mean, I can see like that, like why. 
if you're carrying something around that like from that long ago and you're like thinking about it over and over again that like it can be difficult and like i can see how that can lead to you like having hard sleepless vividly. nights yeah yeah like having those sleepless nights but why do you think that you have such a hard time like giving yourself more grace um because i feel like i don't deserve it the honest truth yeah if i feel like i don't deserve it i feel like i don't deserve the the grace like if uh, i don't know like i feel like everything that i have um isn't for me to be like i worked for it. it's like i i don't know the world had mercy on me and just was like hey here you go hmm. that's interesting now you're gonna that's be sad isn't it that's interesting because I like you. I like some of the stuff you don't tell me like all the time. No, I don't, like, and so, I wait till the podcast to tell you. So like you tell me stuff on the podcast, and I'm like, then I'm like reacting to it, like, mm, like okay, <laughs> <laughs> like I don't yeah. know what to make of that. Like, but, yeah, I know. no, I, I, but I guess we can talk about it. Out. Yeah, I we know. Talk I, about it offline. <laughs> <laughs> offline, we will talk about we it off talk, the podcast. We'll talk about it off the podcast in more detail. Yeah. But no, I mean, I, I think that makes sense. But. I don't, uh, you think it makes sense? No, I mean, I think you don't know how to sense. transition out of that. <laughs> no, no, I'm thinking. I'm still thinking through what you were saying, and mm -hmm. like, I, like, I think it makes sense. Like with the connection that you're making between the vivid dreams and and the uh, and you know the the fact that you're, you know, that you that you feel like you're not giving yourself enough grace, but. And but it, this happens in in real life. Even this even happens like in in true life like in, in actual life like um we had a fight earlier like two days ago or something like that i think and it was a stupid fight but for me it's it's so personal to me because not that it, it has to be personal but because i just i and I've, I've talked about it here on the podcast before about my anxiety my depression and how that's hindered me in my life mm. um but i don't drive alone like mm. i don't drive alone and i'm i'm so grateful that the kid uh Edgar drives now. He has he has his license, and guess what? I've been able to do like sometimes I have time off, um, and I'll just I'll grab the kid and I'll be like, "Bring your stupid computer, let's go." I'm hitting the streets. Like I got things to do. I got I I have to do this. I have to do that. You know what? I just want to get out of the house. Just go take an hour drive anywhere, somewhere, whatever. I need to go. And you, Edgar, let's go. You got class today? No. All right, let's go. Vamos. Um, and that's been it, it's been amazing so far. You know because we'll get in the and we'll talk about things and we'll talk about things that are bothering him and and you know we just we're spending that alone time just me and him and that's been amazing mm. um but again i i can't for the life of me i cannot i cannot get in a vehicle and drive say two three five miles away from my house because i I, it's difficult it's difficult and i'm trying to get to the place where i can just freely be alone on my own taking myself places to do the necessary things and I've been lucky that I do have the support of my family and I do have your support. You know, I am lucky in that very much way in that, you know, that if I have to go somewhere that you can come along with me or that, you know, now I have Edgar and before it was my mom and my sisters, you know, before COVID and my cousins, you know, and I had like all the support in the world to be able to like move around and do the things that I needed to do. But we had this like really stupid fight um i think i was <laughs> i was trying to do something online and i was getting frustrated with uh, uh i was getting frustrated with people that couldn't help me um on zoom and they were supposed to be their help but they didn't know how to help me and i couldn't get help and so i think you approached me and you're like what's wrong with you like you're just you're on edge and i was like leave me alone and you're like whatever you left me alone mm. but you like you internalized it for a moment and then you went to go sit down and i think i told you i was like i need i want to go to the store or something like that right mm -hmm. before that happened and so i went back i was like hey i'm ready let's go to the store and it was like nothing right i came to you like nothing like it was like i hadn't just like like sent you on your way and like leave me alone and so you were like i don't want to go I was like, Juan, let's just go. And you're like, take Edgar. And I was like, I can't. It's it's more than 20 minute hour minute drive that's on the highway. And I don't trust Edgar to get on the freeway with me because we've only taken the streets and I don't want to be stressed off to get to, to that store. And you're like, well, I don't want to go. And I was like, Juan, I'm telling you, just get in the car. We can be mad at each other. Just get in the car. And you're like, I don't want to go. And I was like, and so I got frustrated and that made me get even more frustrated, not at you, but at myself, that I couldn't physically get myself in that vehicle and just go on my own. Mm. And I got so mad at you because I was like, I was forcing that on you to be like, why the fuck don't you have my back? Like, just get in the fucking car. You can be mad at me and let's just go. 
right like i yeah you have you have the right to be mad at whatever you're mad at and do whatever it is that you want to do but me for me it was like why don't you have my back why can't you just do what i need well, you to thing, do but thing, i wasn't even mad like i was just at that by that point i was just tired and i was like i no one that's and I was fine like, i don't want to go like i just and i was like i don't want to go and then i like afterwards i was like well you know what like uh, I, I was like okay well yeah like you know maybe i like if you want to go like sometimes i'll sometimes i'll tell you like if i don't want to go or if I'm not in the, I don't want to drive, I'll be like, well, you drive and I'll just ride with you, mm-hmm. you know, and I'll, and I'll go along with you, you know. But for this moment, it was, it was just the fact that I knew I had a time span to be able to get there mm-hmm. before they closed. Right. And, and the only way that like, I could, I could do it was to get you in the vehicle to drive in the, on the highway. Yeah. That was which, the only way I could like, do that. And like after, like, I was like, well, after I said, no, I don't want to go. I don't want, and I was like, no, I'm not going to go. And then afterwards I was like, well. Uh, maybe I should. Right. Well, it's only like I, I thought about like why you said you wanted to go and like it was only twenty minutes or whatever. And I was like, well, yeah. I was like, okay, well, let's go. And by, and by that time, you were like, no, I don't want to go. Just leave it alone. And I was like, okay. Yeah, and because well, I wasn't mad at you. I, I felt like you had. I for me, I felt like you didn't have my back. And and again, that's my interpretation. Mm-hmm. I know that's not with the reality of it. I know that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I felt like that at that moment because I was like, why can't I just, like, I was mad at myself because I was like, here we go, right? And you're like, you're crying the fucking podcast. What is new here? Um, you're crying? No, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to. <laughs> but to me, I was like, why can't I get in the fucking car and just drive myself? What the fuck is wrong with me? Mm-hmm. And it's so difficult when you're in this, pl- like, it's so, it's hard. <sighs> it's hard. And I get, I get it. I, I've been in that place of depression where hopelessness lived from in within me for years. Mm-hmm. I get it. And so I feel like it's difficult to have grace for yourself where you feel like you're not even independent. Like you're not even, you're not even like you can't even depend on yourself. And you're like, the fuck? Like, I, like, and so, and, and, and I don't know. And I carry a lot of stupid things with me to bed. And I feel like that plays into like having horrible, vivid dreams. And and on top of that, um, on, on top of that, I have a very vivid imagination <laughs> to begin with. Mm. And so, of course, my dreams are like, you know, and, and hopefully I don't have this dream tonight. But I, lucky for me, I don't have dreams like, like somebody chasing me or i don't have like a dream of like going safari and the like lion chasing me and like i don't have a dream of like you know i rarely have dreams of like falling mm. um or things like that but, but my see, other those dreams- things like that you would think like falling would be a bad dream and actually that's not necessarily a bad thing like a bad dream that you would have like mm. At least from what I was reading, that could, but this is falling is not necessarily like a bad thing that you could like a dream that you would have that would be bad. So it would be considered a bad dream. Like, well, I don't read that part, but like, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I, just, I was just reading on the most common dreams. Okay, so but, what is the most common dream? But well, being naked is one. Well, being naked is one, and like um, falling is another common dream. I actually have like some of them on my phone, but I think like like. Uh, what you were saying though about that like the dreams that you were having like snakes like this one is one like the dream like the, the what you were saying though like I'm trying to think back now like when I didn't have grace or when I didn't forgive when I didn't have wasn't as forgiving of myself but I I mean I kind of get where you're coming from but I don't know like that I I think my I think I was less forgiving of myself just because I was like I pressured myself a lot to be like no you you need to like no, you should be doing this. No, you should be doing that. No, you need to be doing that. No, you should already mm-hmm. be that. You should already reach this, or you should already be, like, why did you mess up? Like, ugh, you're so dumb. Like, or you, or like, you, you messed up. Like, why can't you do things right? Like, I would just, like, a lot of like, like, like mm-hmm. being judge, like being mad at myself for not doing things or things not working out the way that I wanted them to. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't know. Self harming, yeah. kind of like mental self harming. Yeah, like being like, uh, I, I, the only thing I can think about of saying it is like putting so much pressure on myself to be like, no, you have to do this. You need to do this. You need, you should be there. You should be doing this. You should like, and all that like self, like, mm-hmm. like, you know, if I didn't do it, then I would get mad. And, yeah. uh, and then I would be like less forgiving of myself. I would get like, I, I, I would have like, episodes where i'll be like man nothing you do is right and this and that and like i would get i would be mm-hmm. upset i would get in that mindset mm-hmm. but like i don't know like i don't know like if it's just that i made enough mistakes that, <laughs> mm-hmm. that i was like okay you're gonna have to get over making mistakes mm-hmm. or it was just that i like got over but it sounds like what you like what you're experiencing is not necessarily tied to that 
like to your own expectations it's more like tied to like your kind of what you're feeling about like what you like what you said about mm-hmm. like the the past and like your your like emotions and this and that no i am i think i'm a highly emotional person <laughs> well <laughs> Let's i think be everybody is but i think some people just don't some people just are less expressive about their emotions no <laughs> <laughs> am i just too expressive about them no like no, i'm not saying that you are i'm not saying but like me, i don't think that's a bad thing i'm okay with expressing my feelings i don't but i don't not like i don't like expressing my feelings that much like you know what i mean like outwardly like right now yeah when, when you were like why are your eyes red and i was like they're just red <laughs> <laughs> let's see like snakes is one of the most common symbols that people dream about mm. um it says it can have associations with sex because of its shape, but also Ugh. the biting and poisonous way instinctual behavior causes us to recoil and ultimately bites back at us. Who thinks sex? Who, who? I'm so confused. Why do people think snakes are sexy? In this way, the snake is a classic symbol of defense of a defense mechanism. Since ancient times, the snake has personified the need to shed the old skin and transform. Mm-hmm. The feminine-centered fertility and snake-worshipping cults of antiquity were so powerful at one time that a mytholo- mythology of evil was implemented to combat them during the rise of the patriarchal religions. Just as a snake is associated with the evil, it represents feelings of for or urges that you deem unacceptable for expression. When you dream of like a snake, sex? when you dream of a snake, <laughs> you are actually making strides to break free of self-imposed restraints. Mm. So see how that like is like mm-hmm. different from what like you would think. Like I mean, you think like snake, and you're like, oh, there's snakes. Like there's evil people in my life, and it's like, oh yeah, the that's why like, the, the snakes, snakes in my, my life. life. the snakes of my life okay i get that i get like snakes are like you know they're they're unwanted you know they're unwanted and and unwanted things in your life for people who are like negative or people who are like being sneaky and snaky and so slithery and you don't want them in your life i get that but i don't understand the association to sex and snake like for example the movie like what's her uh what's her like britney like in the in one of her concerts she has like this big old python white python and she's like dancing with it and i was like that's not sexy or like uh the same thing why is, why is Nicki minaj's song called anaconda yeah well why is that other song my don't anaconda. want none of my anaconda yeah. i'm like what anaconda <laughs> the only anaconda i've uh, ever seen is with j-lo in the freaking rainforest you know when they were killing it uh, but like for the other one who is sama hayek she like there's this movie there's this like, movie that she's anaconda? in i'm like mm. <laughs> no seas grossero that's what they mean Angelica. what do you think it is no Nicki minaj says you don't want none of my anaconda I don't know what Nicki Minaj says, but I'm talking about the other why song. Why would why what anaconda does she have? I don't. I'm not talking about the other song. What song? The one that my anaconda don't. My anaconda don't want none unless you got buns in. No. <laughs> Jesus heavens. Go to. You know what? Go to bed. Go to bed. <laughs> no, but but for example, like Sama Hayek in that movie, uh, where she has like a snake and she's doing like a sexy dance with the snake. I don't see the symbolism. I don't see the symbolism when that? you cross. Was that it's, a it's a Sama Hayek. It's a Sama Hayek movie. Was that with Will Smith? No, it's with what's his name. It's uh, oh, was it a uh, Despera- Desperado? Oh my God, I gotta look this with, up now. Uh, Antonio Banderas. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. The one. Yeah. Okay, so she does like a sexy dance with the snake. I was like, why? How are sexy? How are sex? Sexy snakes. How are sexy snakes? <laughs> sexy. <laughs> How are snakes sexy? I don't see the resemblance. I don't see the correlation to it. Mm. I think it's pretty like self-explanatory and <laughs> the way people interpret it, like when they're talking about that. But like, like let me show you a few other dreams. I think that's what he's talking about. Losing teeth. So people say losing. losing oh, I've teeth had. I have the that dream before so. losing my teeth. This is a dream you may have when moving through a transition in life. Moving, changing jobs, breaking up, etc. It simply means that you are growing out of one phase and into the next. Like a child losing his or her teeth. Embrace the change. Falling. This is a dream you may have when you are feeling overwhelmed. Symbolically, the earth beneath your feet has vanished and you don't feel like you have solid footing or a firm foundation in life. Maybe you have taken on too much and need to slow down. Take care of yourself. Oh, what is your source? Say the say the name of your source. So this is a website called Goop. Yeah, what do you do? You know who runs that website or who owns Goop? No, I just googled. It's a. <laughs> it's like a, but it's similar. There are other like websites out there that like. Uh, no, do you know who owns Goop? 
Who owns it? Do you know? Is that what you're asking me? Yeah. Who owns it? But see, there's like other ones. There's like Medical News Today, um, Times Now News, Time Magazine, Harper's Bazaar. All of these people have like art, like articles on what your dreams mean. You were on Goop, right? Yeah. Com? Yeah. Who owns Goop? Donald Trump. Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh. Why is that bad? No. She. <laughs> have you seen the other articles in Goop? Mm-mm. All right, when we get off, you go look at the articles. Go see what other kind of articles they have, and you'll understand why I'm asking. Wait, why? What's wrong with the goop? Yeah, I just go look at it. Just go look at it. Just go eventually you're, when we get off. You're making I'll make a, fun of you later. You're making a negative connotation. I am not negative. I'm making the hilarious connotation here. Why? I'll laugh at you later. Let me see. I'm going to go to goop.com now. What? Well, what's so funny? Top 10 clean beauty swaps to make in 2021. Eight investment-worthy detox tools. Vibrators, sex toys, lubes, and more for every desire? Is that what you're laughing at? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> I just, I want you to see the, the kind of, like, articles they have. I'm looking at them. No, that's not, that's not all of them. All right. Well, I guess if you guys know what Goop is, you all can right. tell me about it. But I just Googled it, and I was mm-hmm. just, like, like looking to see what, what the dreams were. Like, mm-hmm. what common dreams were, and that those were some of the common ones. Mm-hmm. But I think it's interesting how, like, sometimes you think, I guess, that you think that your dream means one thing but it doesn't necessarily mean that Mm -hmm. that thing that you think so i don't know for me it was just like my dream that i had it was it was vivid and i guess that's a good word for it like it was vivid enough that it made me like think after about it after i had it Mm -hmm. and it it stuck with me so i think like that's the only reason that i was like you know what let's talk about dreams a little bit Mm -hmm. and well i'm happy you brought it up i thought you were gonna bring up dreams like in another sense no in in another sense really quick before we leave you want to tell the story about that one time you had a dream and you hit me across the face and i think we talked about it here but i don't remember what i dream Uh. i didn't do it i don't remember what i dream i just remember that i like like you, when I woke up, you woke me up. I think because you like you were okay. So I, since you don't remember what the dream was about, I, we won't go into what the dreams about. I'll just tell you what happened. So what happened was that he was in bed, laying in a bed, and he was like moving about, like ah ah stop. <laughs> and I was like the fuck. And I got up. I was like Juan, you okay? Juan, you okay? Because I was thinking to myself like, holy shit, this guy's gonna have like a fucking heart attack mm. in bed. This guy, oi, like I never met you. I was like, Juan is sitting here. He's going to have like a freaking heart attack. I was like, Juan, Juan, you're okay. You're okay. You're okay. And you're like, you look at me like scared. And then you look at me and you go, pass, <laughs> right across my face. And I was like, oh, I was like, oh my God. I was I like, do, I remember that what's I, wrong with you? And you're like, I remember when you woke me up that when you told me what happened, that I started laughing. You started what, laughing? That I started laughing. Didn't I? When you told me that I hate Juan, you. Juan, I, I don't want to punch you today. <laughs> I don't want to hit you today. So, no, I'm just kidding. No, but like, I remember you laughed about it days later and I was like, it's still not funny. I still don't find it funny. I don't find it funny. I don't find it hilarious at all. Um, but I remember you like hit me and I was like, I got so mad. I was like, and you're like, and you stood there and you're like, and you do that right there. When he gets uncomfortable, he snickers like that. He'll be like, I'm like, don't you fucking dare laugh. Don't you fucking dare laugh. That's not funny. That's not funny. Like right now he's laughing and I want to like, I want to like kick him under. So, but I remember you were like, at the moment you were like, <gasps> and I was like, <gasps> I was like, fuck is wrong with you? And I was like, like, I was so in shock. And I remember after like me complaining and like uh, complaining and complaining over, I was like, why would you hit me? Why would you hit me? And you're like, I don't know. I was dreaming this, and this was what happened. You're oh like, my can god! I, trust you? I, I did. Like, I can't trust you. Just I couldn't. Next to me anymore. I couldn't because I don't know if you were like you use that as an excuse to like harm me. You're I don't like, know if you were like choke me. Yeah, no, I didn't. I was like, I don't know if you're gonna like just if you're gonna have another dream, you're gonna come over and you're gonna hit me again. And I'm like, you know what? I don't mind. I, I do not mind dragging you through the house. Like I will grab you by your feet, your hair, and drag you through the house if you like do that shit again. And I was like, and I don't want to do that. So I don't trust you. I don't trust you to like mm-hmm. to sit there and 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 sleep next to me. I didn't. And you were like, which is why we sleep on tw- on twin beds now, separate beds. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember. Uh, you started sleeping, I think, on the sofa for the next two nights, and you're like, and you're like, I don't know what happened. Like, I was reading on it, and they were saying like, even some people have harmed other people being in their sleep, and I was like, I think they're using their sleeps as an excuse to like hurt the other person. Is that what the fuck you did? Is that what happened? You seen an opportunity, and you're like, oh, this is a good time to smack her across the face. So I did, and I was like, nope, I don't trust you. But I, that was an interesting time, and you you got up, and I was like, 
I've I've never seen I've never heard that had to happen to anybody else mm. and so i was like taken aback by it i need to research that dream because i think it's i think i think it. you didn't research the dream you researched how what you what you can do in your sleep and how no no i, I said i need to go back and read up on that because i don't remember that but i need oh. to go back and see like what that means because i think for other people have like it is a common thing because if, if people like write about it and, yeah i like, put stuff out there about it but yeah that was crazy <laughs> yeah yeah and i was like i thought for sure at You're some point mad. you were gonna meet um, yeah don't, wouldn't you anybody who's been hit by somebody else is still mad about it it was years ago on Helica. <laughs> i don't care i'll bring it up again i don't care this is like the third time you mentioned it on the podcast by the way is it is it can you tell i'm still mad about it so guys all right i won't bring it up anymore maybe so guys i slapped angelica in my dream that's not funny no, I'm not saying. Not I'm in not your dream. Not in your dream. You, you hit me in real life. No, I'm saying like I'm like so I'm repeating it so that we can like, because you put a, put a pin in it because you've already said it like three or four times already. Don't <laughs> fucking tell me when to put a pin in it. I'll put a pin in it when I want to. Hmm. Don't make me kick you off the podcast, Juan. You're gonna kick me off the podcast. Yeah, you're. I'm trying to be like a. Um, I'm trying to make light of it, also, Juan. But I have to tell you, it did bother me, and it still bothers me when I talk about it. Okay. Well, let's leave it at that. I'm not trying to be like, I know you're being a good sport. I'm not trying to like... I'm not trying to be a good sport. I'm trying not to let it bother me. Yeah. All right. And with that, we'll see you next time. Bye. How's that the end of the show? <laughs> <laughs> That's not the end of the show. No, it's okay. Yeah. I'll edit part of that. Huh? I said, I'll edit it. I'll edit that. No, leave it in. No, I'll edit part of it. No, see. leave it in. Huh? Leave it in. Leave it on? Leave it in. Leave it on? In. Leave it in? Yeah. Leave that part of it in. That makes for a good sound bite. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. All right. I'm gone. I'm, if you're not leaving, I'll leave. Bye. All right, guys. Well, thanks for listening to this episode. I know um, it's only the second episode of the new year, and we're already getting random here. But um, we appreciate you listening. We appreciate you um um, telling other people about our podcast and if you do find us online uh and you're listening to us you can also watch us in video form like we've like uh we said before we're on facebook and on youtube where you can go and watch us in on video and the whole show we upload the whole show there and you can also just go to juanofwords.com and you can find our podcast there everywhere um as well as if not you then who angelica's podcast is on juanofwords.com now as well so you can go listen there also and like we always say say tell your friends tell your friend tell your friends tell your family tell your mom tell everybody to come listen to the one of words podcast and if you enjoy what you're listening to leave us a positive review five stars would be great mm-hmm. you're done i'm done angelica's checked out so until next time guys we'll see you later bye bye <laughs> <laughs> Are you mad or what? No, I'm not mad. I just, I, I was trying to finish up the show and you're like, oh, we're not going to leave it there. <laughs> and then you're like, so with that being said, we'll see you next time. And I was like, the fuck? Like, I just tried to end it. And you're like, no. We got to be professional. I am professional. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>